All right, guys, here we are back for round two of our modern eight man with Teamer Prowess. We are on the draw. We have four lands Snapcaster, Vapor Snag, Abbott. This hand seems fine. We will keep it. Um, I don't know. You always wish you could start off with a Tarmogoy for a Monastery of Swiss Beer or something, but I haven't yet decided how often we're playing Abaddon in turn two. I think we're going to do it more often than not just because we have eight hits um, and then we just want to like start. Uh, you know, Vapor Snag is better when it's, you know, obviously letting us attack through blockers and, um, you know, getting some damage in. And just sitting back doesn't seem to be doing good, you know, working towards our game plan. But also, Abbott is fine if we can wait, um, just because we have a, a whole bunch of one drops to cast off of it, too. So I don't know what's best, but so I don't talk for 10 minutes. I'm going to play a Scalding Tarn and pass. Looks like we're probably playing against Jund. I think we can handle Jund pretty well. Um, yeah, they seem to be pretty clunky. Uh, yeah, pretty clunky. Um, yeah, we have the breeding pool in hand. That would kind of be the best land that we want to get here. So I think we're going to fetch a blue source. Um, bounce this thing to his hand and then play Abbott. I guess we could just fetch Island. Yeah, we our hand seems to be good enough. We could just fetch Island Mountain. Get that guy out of here. Another Vapor Snag. Yeah, I think we just want to play Abbott. I know we could just play Liliana, make a sacrifice. I don't know. I'm going to hope he doesn't have Liliana. This play is pretty good if he doesn't have Liliana. We still have eight things that we can hit for free off of this Abbot, but even if we miss, that's not that bad. Hey. Not bad. Lightning Bolt. This deck could also use a Mutagenic Growth. Eight out of forty-eight isn't the worst odds there. It's still not very good odds, but we're making that play. Like we don't make that play because we're looking to hit. We make it because we're trying to stress his mana. Um, if we can keep the confidant off the field until we can find a way to actually deal with it permanently, that's good for us. And the best case scenario, I mean, he's going to cast lightning bolt here. Um. What are we doing? I think we're shocking the breeding pool first. That's happening. And then I think we're casting this. Getting some more information. Inquisition. That's no fun. I'm fine with a trade here. Yeah, it's possible we can just get free damage. No, I'm just going to go for it. Ooh, giving my opponent extra cards is not where I want to be. But I kind of want to pick my Abbot back up. I can pick my abbot up, cast Tarmogoyf, or I could just like bounce his confidant. That means the next turn he gets to Inquisition, replay confidant, take my Snapcaster, but I have a Goyf. The question is, do I think abbot is better than him having a confidant on the field? And I think since I bounced it once, I think I want to bounce it again and just kind of like leave him stranded with cards in hand that, he, that he's like you know having to spend mana over and over to cast the problem is this leaves me with nothing like 
if I bounce his confidant and I just play Goyf, he gets to inquisition me, replay his confidant, and all I have is a Goyf to his handful of stuff. Whereas if I bounce my abbot, play Goyf, then he gets a he gets the free spell off of the confidant, but I have something to fight with. He gets the inquisition one thing. But leaving me with a snapcaster. Eh, I don't know. I think I need to bounce his confidant. Uh, I did forget about the extra card off Bobble. It makes things a little bit better. This is worst case scenario. Another abbot is good. Eh. I guess it kills his Liliana. Do I want to kill his Liliana? Yeah, because then, yeah, then next turn I can Snapcaster kill his uh, Confidant if he doesn't have another discard spell, and the Abbot still gets to hit him. So I think I want to kill his Liliana. It's the same amount of damage either way, except this way I get a land that I get to play. I get to get something out of his hand, but it's likely he has a fifth land. Oh no. This is bad news. See, at this point of the game, he should be at, like, you know, 10 or something to where the Confidant at least is something that he has to think about. But here he can just gleefully cast it. That's fine, I guess. Not a bad draw. So I have a 6-7 to his Dark Confidant. The race is on. So after round one, I think it's apparent that I draw pretty good, but some of you might be thinking I might be drawing too well. One thing we do have to remember is that there are 18 land in the deck and 10 of them are fetch lands. So we thin our deck out quite a lot. Like right now, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Right now, 11 of 41 are land. Oh, lucky you. Thoughtseize does not help him. That's, see, that's what we're wanting. We're wanting our opponent to reveal Thoughtseize. Yeah, Goyf is a six, seven, thanks to our bobble. Um, and his Planeswalker. So, like, Raging Ravine, Confidant isn't anywhere near killing my guy. Now he has to start thinking about, assuming what else he drew. I mean, all he needs is a Terminate to turn this around. But, like, this shows that he's got, you know, some clunkers that he doesn't really want to be revealing with Confidant. He might just want to, like, animate, hit me with Ravine, try and race. That seems fine. Four, five, six. I'm at eight. Next turn, I take um, five, six, seven, go to one. I'm still winning this race. Does he die? Yeah, he dies. To Liliana. <laughs> uh, there was a. There's a quote. There's a quote that I that I wanted to say, but it's gone. Alright, 
So game two, we have Deprive, which is pretty good against this stuff. Um, his stuff. This is high level analysis you're getting from me here. Um, but seriously, um, Roast is good against his uh, one-up Tasker, his own Tarmogoyfs, his other, um, you know, just like extra removal for creatures. Though we're not really worried about Tasker because we have the Vapor Snags. I feel like Seal of Fire is fine, just as like it can clean up and finish off a Lilian after he makes me sacrifice a creature. Um, it makes my Goyfs bigger. I can't keep using that as a reason, even though it's true. I don't really like Negate just because he does play a high number of creatures. Is a Charm seem, Seems great as uh, something that can help me discard extra lands, kill a Confidant, or counter a Luliana. Um, I feel like I underboard with this deck. Like Suicide Zoo, I feel like I overboard. Um, playing a deck like that, I just end up like cutting a lot of bobbles and uh, um, uh, the swamp guy. I'm forgetting his name. No, that's gonna bug me now. Um, see, this this is why you don't talk about other decks while you're busy sideboarding with one deck. All right, let's forget about it. What am I cutting? Um, Grim Lava Mancer seems okay. Maybe I don't want Seal of Fire. Like it's good against Scavenging Ooze. It's good against um, like it's Huntmaster if he's got it. It's good against like fin yeah. Like we talk about Scavenging or Seal of Fire as a card that helps us like when go when Goyfs are hitting other Goyfs. I feel like I have to be playing them. Rancor also seems good. Maybe I just want to be trimming probes? That doesn't seem good at all. Maybe I don't want Romans on the draw, but I can bring him back in on the play. I can see that. Bolt has to be better than Seal of Fire. I don't know. I'll play one. Maybe I don't want any of them. I'm trying. I'm thinking that maybe, you know, Vapor Snags and Remands seems to be a better play than just trying to kill his stuff. I don't know. There are definitely a lot of different ways you can approach it, which is cool. I like that. Uh, Mystery Rainforest will fetch Breeding Pool, which will let Scalding Tarn go get a mountain. Inquisition takes my Snapcaster, I would assume. Alright, just taking the Steering Visions. Um, I guess we'll look at the top of our deck. Copper Line Gorge, we don't want that. So... Yeah, we'll just go get that Breeding Pool now. All right, draw a card. Lava Mancer's fine. So he plays Confidant or a Goyf maybe. We get to bounce it, play Lava Mancer. <coughs> nope, just all the discard. Vapor Snag, he has to have another discard spell. If he's taking the Vapor Snag there. We... Creature cards can't enter the battlefield from graveyards or libraries. Okay. That's fine. Well, I'm not going to play my Lava Mancer into his uh, Liliana, so I guess I'll just flash in the Snapcaster. Yep.
An opponent stuck on the old two lands. So we can do cool things like um, flash in our Snapcaster Mage, exile our Bobble, and our Tarn to finish off his Goyf. You know, like attack with Goyf and Snapcaster, and if he wants to block, nah, I think we would just attack with Goyf. Because we want the Snapcaster for Liliana. It's it's interesting to consider though how like the lava mancer can shrink his goyf beyond like a size that you know you would normally expect, but he's just gonna be aggressive with it. Like on top of the two damage that the lava mancer does, he can end up doing like, you know, technically end up doing like three or four damage, which is interesting. More land is not good. Not good at all. Um, to play the seal here means I need to fetch a shock, which I guess is fine, but it's bad when I'm trying to race. Um, I can exile a creature and, yeah, so I can exile my goyf and the bobble, which will shrink them down to a 3-4. And I guess I can kill it. Yeah, so I can kill it with Lava Mancer plus Seal. Okay, that's fine. So we'll cast this first. Opponent's F6. I might just want to kill it while we know he's got nothing crazy. Because, like, next turn he could, like, you know, kill my Snapcaster in response to grow him again. I am doing this math right. I think I am. Goyf, Bobble. Yeah. Oh, enchantment. No! I knew I was doing something wrong. No. I hate that. That was dumb. That feels bad. We lost this game. I knew, I knew it wasn't that easy. I forgot. It's just the same as like, you know, bolting a 2-3 goyf. It's gonna be in the graveyard. A dumb mistake. Yeah, this should be game. For what it's worth, I don't know if we could have won. Maybe we could have. Serum Visions is a good draw here. Rancor just doesn't do anything at all. I guess I don't want him to make me discard it. Yeah, we're dead to removal. He could always just make me discard it after it returns to my hand after I chump his guy. Hey, this is bad, bad, bad. This is what I'm talking about. Like, it's the little things. Though the Tarmogoyf thing was a stupid mistake that I shouldn't have made. But, yeah, that's game. Sorry, guys. We'll get him in the third one. Alright, so I think we want these remands again. If he's on the Graph Digger's Cage plan, I don't really think I want to cut Snapcasters. Maybe I'll trim one. I have other stuff I want to be doing. Seal of Fire seems pretty meh on the play. The Dispels seem great. But not when he's just taking apart my hand with Discard.
I think I'll play one Dispel over a Vapor Snag. That's what that's what these games are for. They're to they're to try out other things and see how it goes. If I just sideboard the same the same every round, then I'm not really gonna learn anything, and there's not gonna be video evidence of my stupidity. But if I mix things up and maybe figure out uh, you know a different way of doing things, then I believe they call that value. All right. We'll be on the play. The sand is great. Swiss spear. Hitcha. I guess he takes my other Swiss spear here. If he has Maelstrom Pulse, maybe I could see him taking Snapcaster or Bobble. Or maybe he takes Snapcaster. I don't know. I could see him taking e any one of these cards. Yeah, he takes the Swiss Spear. Seems fine. Lightning Bolt. That's not good. So this bolt is going at whatever he casts. Um, Maybe not a Tarmogoyf, because it won't kill a Tarmogoyf. But it'll go to his face so I can Snapcaster Bolt him next turn. Yeah, I don't have double red to like double bolt a Goyf. Yeah, I'm killing that. I'm killing that and I'm passing with three mana so I can Snapcaster Bolt. Drop decay. All the removal. The spell's pretty good. Not against abrupt decay. Thinking about shocking it. So if he shocks it, that really helps me. He goes to 12 and then Snapcaster Bolt puts him to 9. My attack puts him to 7 and this other Bolt puts him to 4. Um, he's at 6 if he doesn't shock. I guess he could uh, Bolt. Like, Abrupt Decay, my Monastery, so Spear, Bolt, my Snapcaster before I untap. But if he goes for Liliana here, he's pretty unhappy. Opponent's at nine. Stomping ground's not what I'm looking for. Um, I think I hold it. He has Colgon's command. He has Liliana's. <sighs> what could you have been? A seal of fire. Kind of like that. It's a dispel. That 
that's not good. Anything but a Liliana of the Veil, please. Hey. It's not a Liliana of the Veil. That's a big boy. Thirteen is a lot of life. Could I race? I could Snapcaster a Bolt, put him to 10, swing to 8. I have a Dispel to protect me from removal, but then he could just, at any point, stop swinging. Um, I could Is a Charm to like trade in the Stomping Ground. But I'm probably likely one of the two cards that I draw is going to be a land, so it's going to be basically Snapcaster Cycle. And that's pretty unimpressive. Um, I don't think I snapcast or block bolt. I don't think that's really getting me anywhere. I think I have to try and start swinging. Like, Tarmogoyf blocks this guy. If I can find it. Maybe I do is a charm. Seems better than 3 damage. counter that He has another bolt. Hmm. I have to trade. Problem is, he hits another land and he can just start attacking with Raging Ravine. Hey. Maybe that's the best news for me. He hits a land, animates, and I can kill it now. I think I can go to 11. I think I can wait one more turn and see. If he plays a Dark Confidant, I'm going to want to kill that. That is a gigantic Tarmogoyf. That doesn't do anything. There's a charm's gone, so I might as well just play the land. I don't know, maybe I don't want to play the land. I can put him to seven.
Or I can kill an obstinate Baloth. I think I need to kill the Baloth, hope to draw a Tarmogoyf or a Vapor Snag. That Baloth gained him 10 life. Good draw. Remand does not help me. Tarmogoyf does. Don't draw a land. If he casts a spell, I get to play Tarmogoyf and have a deprive. In business or close to it. Problem is, once he hits a land, he gets to animate ravine. an Olivia Voldaren. He can start attacking with Raging Ravine. I am in trouble. I need like running Vapor Snags. That is not a Vapor Snag. He hits another land. He gets to attack into my Tarmogoyf and then ping my Tarmogoyf to kill it. It's a removal spell, I'm dead on the spot. Womp womp. I don't know, this match I feel um I don't know. I feel like it was close. I think I definitely made a mistake in game two. I'm not sure if it would have made a difference. Um, it seemed like the game was pretty close to where it probably did make a difference, but uh, Jund is definitely a close match. Um, our, the discard spells are tough to handle, and he's got, you know, goyce of his own too. If he can disrupt my synergy, his uh, individual card power can take over, and it's tough to fight through his blockers and he's got a lot of cheap removal and he's just well suited to like fight the kind of game that we're trying to present um jund is just like uh his access to discard spells and just individual redundant uh powerful threats and good answers um makes like these synergistic decks uh have a lot of trouble finding a way to win the game um and like you saw it was just like an uphill battle the entire time but I don't know. It's interesting. Um, but yeah, that's that. We will uh, play one more round, and um, that's that. We'll be back for round three.